Hello everyone, it's Benny, and as I promised last time, today we're going to keep working on the monster class. Last time we got the sprite support going, so the monster is, you know, it's able to face us, look like, you know, a flat image, not like a plane, which is what we're going for. So, yeah. And now what I want to do is I want to take the monster, and I just want to implement the chase state. Not with animation, just the logic. So I'm going to make it start in the chase state, and here what we're going to do is we're just going to update, well, yeah, we're, well, of course, it's a chase update function. We're going to update, surprise. But what we're going to do is we're going to make the monster chase the player, and we're going to make the monster affected by collisions, in theory anyways, so that it can't walk through walls or anything, and it should be pretty interesting. So to start off with, I want the same information that I have here. So actually what I'm going to do, just to sort of save a little bit, I guess, so I'm going to calculate this at the start of the update method. In fact, I'm going to do it a little bit interestingly. I'm going to have some float distance, which is direction to camera dot length, and vector 3f orientation, which is direction to camera, divided by distance, which does the exact same thing as direction to camera dot normalized, except without recalculating length. And I'm just going to pass it to all these methods, or pass these to all these methods. So this is going to take in some vector 3f orientation and float distance. Just split up. And I'm splitting up ahead of time because in yeah, I need it there. Well, I don't need it here, so I'm not going to pass it in. Here I'm going to need the orientation, so I'm going to take in the vector 3f orientation. Wait, wrong place. I'm going to pass an orientation, and that is going to take in the vector 3f orientation, which I'm going to rename direction to camera. And that... And this is just a way of reusing the calculation, so I don't have to calculate the exact same thing 20 times in the same update call. So, yeah. And we have all the update methods take this in. So they're all going to take in the vector 3f orientation and the float distance. Every last one of them. And to every single one of them, I'm going to pass that exact same in, orientation and distance. So, if I do all that, it's not like the calculation's horrendously expensive anyways, it's just, you know, it, it can be done as better than redoing the calculation 10 million times, so why not? Again, I know this isn't the ultimate guide to coding practices, but still. So in the chase update method, what do we need to do? Well, for one, we already know the direction of the player, so let's just first off have a move speed. So, oh, yeah, I, I'll make another constant. Public static, final float, move speed equals one, yeah, one. And I'll adjust that accordingly. So I'll actually have blow the states, so, and to do, make this value appropriate. And yeah, now. I'm going to take my transform dot get translation. I'm just going to add orientation times move speed, and I'm going to multiply that by time dot get delta, and cast it that to a float. And this should at least, at the in a very minimal sense, make enemies start chasing us. Except I'm not starting in the chase state, am I? Oh, I am. Well, maybe move speed's just incredibly low. Because... I think I'm seeing moving a, a very small amount. Let's try upping this to something like... 100. I guess it's not quite enough. And... No. Is this getting called? Well, 
Welcome to the most advanced Hello World program in the world. <laughs> okay, it's getting cold. Uh, oh, wait, you know why? <laughs> because I'm not... This is... I'm not assigning this to anything. So first off, let's not make that 100. Let's change it back to 1. And set the translation to this. That should give me something a little bit more meaningful. Oh, whoa! Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> He's running away from me! This isn't what... <laughs> not quite what I was going for, but... Well, that guy really does not like me. Dang! That's not how I remember what was sign 3D. But, okay. I think I... Okay, well, I guess... <laughs> I guess this has to be negative, then. Did you do the calculation backwards or something? Okay, much better. Now he's chasing us, not the other way around. Great! The only problem is he'll just go, like, right on top of us. Which isn't really what I'm going for. <laughs> Actually, that's interesting. I wonder why he, like, slows down. Hmm. Okay, well, whatever. It's not that overly important. So actually, what I want to do is I want to do a check here. If distance is less than... I'll have some constant for that. Public static final float. Movement stop distance. Which I'll just set to 1.5. So, wait. If, if the distance is greater than that, then we're going to start chasing the player. Okay. So he chases us, and he stops. It's a little bit far away, but, you know, it's mostly what I'm looking for. He'll chase us all over the place. The problem is, he can chase us right through a wall. <laughs> so we're actually going to want to do some collision detection here. So I'm going to have some vector 3f movement vector, and I'm going to set it equal to this, and yeah, and movement vector, actually, I'm going to see if I can copy some code from here, so collision vector, oh right, that's in the level class, so I might have a little bit more trouble doing this. Hmm. One moment while I think of the best way to do this. I'm probably just going to make the... Well, no, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. One moment. Okay, so I thought about it a bit off-screen, and I realized we don't need the Rect Collide method to check for collisions in our monster. Why? Because our level already has this method, called Check Collisions, which will do the exact same thing for us. So yeah, that was completely unnecessary. I just wasn't thinking for some reason. So, let's see. This method needs an old position, a new position, and the width and length of our object. That's easy enough. So, vector 3f, old pass. That's just going to be wherever we are right now. So, transform.get translation. Vector 3f, new position. Well, that's going to be our movement vector. So, I'm just going to move this over here. Or move the calculation over here. And go ahead and delete that. And, yeah, that's going to complain for now. Oh well. Now, we're going to need width and height, which we don't have. So, I'm going to create constants for that, for width and length, for monster width, which I'm going to, just going to, I don't know, 0 0.2. And we have monster length, which will be, I don't know, 0. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> and we'll just go from there. Again, we'll make these values appropriate. And other than that, I think we can just go ahead and create the collision vector. So vector 3f, collision vector, that's going to equal game.getLevel.checkCollision collision with old position, new position, monster width, and thank you, <laughs> not quite what I wanted to do, and monster length. 
And yeah, that matches up perfectly. So that will give us all of our collisions just like we like them. And let's see. I think that's just about everything we have to do. So, first off, I'm going to want to take vector 3f movement vector, which is going to equal collision vector times orientation, and that should zero out whatever axes we can't quite move on. And if movement vector dot length is greater than zero, so if there's any length to it at all, then we can perform the translation which unfortunately we can't reuse because orientation is different from movement vector. So mostly the same calculation, just like this. And you know what, why not? I can take that out, I can take out float move amount, which is going to equal this. And there. Just to reuse slightly less, or just to reuse a little bit more of the calculation. And if all goes according to plan, by some miracle, this should provide proper collisions. So, let's see what happens. Start up nothing, and he explodes. Wonderful! So, yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and debug this off-screen, because I suspect I've done something horribly, horribly wrong. It's going to take me a while to figure out, so one moment. And I realized what the problem is. The problem is that... Right now, we're setting our translation to just how much we're supposed to move. We're not actually adding that to our movement. So what we want to do is we want to take our previous translation and add the movement amount, and that's what we want our new translation to be. Now, it should work. And, oh, look at that, he's moving. But, and he's colliding, look at that. He can just scarcely fit around the corner. He can... Yeah, look at him, creeping around the corner slowly like that. Ah. <laughs> Great. So, our Nazi guy can collide with, at least with walls. Can he collide with doors, though? Come on, gotta lure him over here. I'm waiting. Any second now. Alright. So, oh, ha <laughs> ha! Shut the door on him. And that's actually something I... One more thing I should probably change. I should make him be able to, you know, open doors. And... Let's see. Hmm. Actually, one moment. I want to try and think of a good way to do this. And, okay. Here's my idea. I'm going to go to... Let's see. Ah, right here. Where I have this method. I'm going to extract that as a new public method. Public void open doors, which is going to take in some vector 3f position. And I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to change this not to from player get position to just the position we pass in. And I'm going to change this code to use this open doors method with... Oh, Dagnabbit, what do I have it as? Wait, Dagnabbit. <laughs> as this. So, open doors with the player's position. And I'm just going to, well, call this method with the monster. But when do I call is really the question. And here's how I'm going to do this. If movement vector... Do I have a dot equals? Hmm. Yeah, but that's not quite the same. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract the... From the movement vector, I'm going to subtract my orientation vector. And I'm going to check if this length is not equal to zero. Wait. Yeah. So this will... Yeah, okay, so here's how that's going to work. If I subtract them and the length isn't zero, then that means the collision vector has somehow changed our orientation, so we are colliding with something. So that's how it's, this is pretty much going to work. If we are colliding with something, then try doors with transform dot get translation. And actually, should I? Actually, yeah, I'm going to do this after this. I don't think it'll make sense, but er, 
I don't think it will matter, but I think it probably makes a little bit more sense like that. And, well, let's test it out. So now... Okay, so nothing's destroyed yet. And he's coming. Any second now, you know. Maybe I should have increased the move speed for this section. Okay, here he comes. Gonna open the door. It's gonna close on him. And, oh, look at that. He can open the door. <laughs> Not the most advanced AI in the world, but you know. It works. He's not going to get stuck, and he's going to chase us down to the better... Well, we, maybe he'll get stuck, but... He's going to chase us down to the better end. That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm going for. So, great. And that's just about everything I want to cover in this video. But I do want to say something. This collision code, this is ridiculous. We shouldn't have to, one, do this really low-level collision calculation, and two, it really, sh it really should be some way to determine what we collide with, so I can do this, you know, wait, not this, this, the open door calculation, a little bit better. So for one, yeah, yeah, we need a physics engine. Actually, that should be a big topic. It's one of the big topics. We need a physics engine, because this is ridiculous at this point. Yeah, it works, but it's not very effective. But I do want to add something I forgot to add last time, and that is sprite support. That'll mostly be done with orthogonal views, but you know, it's worth adding in. We don't have a good way of supporting them right now. And I actually think there's one more thing I wanted to add in here, but I can't remember it anymore. So, uh, sorry, guess I should have done it when I was thinking of it. So anyways, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we should be setting up our monster to start shooting down our player. So, thank you. See you then. Oh yeah, I remember now. The thing I forgot is this line of code right here. We should need to do something this ridiculous to compare two vectors. So, yeah, we need a good way to compare vectors. You know, without some ridiculous subtraction thing. I mean, technically this is how we'll probably end up doing it, something like this anyways, but eh, it's still it's a lot just to compare vectors. It shouldn't be this complicated. You shouldn't need to think about it. There should just be a method to do it for you. Anyways, for real this time, thank you, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.